Andrew Voss, Cox Plate betting started in earnest. It certainly has. There's plenty of tips in the ring, Ken, but all the big money has been and still is for might and power. We did mention earlier today that even money would be a good price. Well, that would be a sensational price right at the moment. Five to four on and 11 to eight on, around about $1.70, $1.80 in the ring here at Mooney Valley. Tycoon Lily, bit of respect for it as the opening prices go up. Now seven to two. It was four to one uh, around about half an hour ago. But might and power, they'll be backing the champ. Thank you very much, Andrew. Well, Jack Denham's won a Golden Sliver. He's won a Caulfield Cup and he's won a Melbourne Cup. And he makes no secret of the fact that he'd love to win a Cox Plate. He's run second the last two years with Falonte. He was beaten several years ago with Purple Patch. And he's just hoping that this year it's might and power. The triangle, Jack Denham, might and power, the Cox Plate. It just means so much to the veteran trainer. Earlier this year, John Tapp... Uh, gained a rare insight into Jack Denham when he did an exclusive interview for the wide world of sport. Let's revisit that as John Tapp reports. He's now officially recognised as the world's best stayer. But when Might and Power first lobbed at the door of trainer Jack Denham, he was just another hopeful. Passed in at the yearling sales, this son of Zabil didn't race until he was almost three. At first, Jack wasn't convinced his new acquisition was anything out of the ordinary. You can say he's all, more or less come good overnight, John, because he'd only won one mediocre race and I first race along in the Canterbury and he only just scrambled in in the 1900 metre race and I thought well you're just a horse. My band star put his head in front but Might and Power's coming again. Might and Power again rested the lead away from My Band Star and Might and Power far too strong draws away to win it well over My Band Star. Jack's opinion changed for good in the autumn of last year. He's adamant interference cost Might and Power the AJC Australian Derby but he made up for that in the Frank Packer plate, producing the most decisive performance of the car. Raced up and he ambled to the front on top of the rise. Might and power shot clear coming to the 200 mark. He put about two and a half lengths on Sakti, followed by Babu's boy and then something special, but it's all might and power. He's been the real surprise packer to the three-year-old group, an enormous run in the derby last week, and he deserves this win, and he wins with his head on his chest. Well done, Nick. His winner margin was eight lengths. I reckon he could have won me 10 or 15 lengths. Yeah. I've never seen all sprint like he sprinted at Ramick. And at the presentation, I says, this is the best horse I've seen since Kingston Town. Big statement, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. But he's lived up to it. Did he? What? Might and Power's achievements last spring are now part of racing folklore. The Caulfield and Melbourne Cups double gave Jack one of the missing jewels in his big race crown. But after 50 years of training, there's still one race that eludes him. A race might and power can bring him. Yeah, that's my ambition. If you can to win, win the Cox Plate, that's all I want. Well, that was my next question, Jack. You've done it all. Golden Slippers, Melbourne Cups. Is this the one you really want? That's the one that's got away, John. If might and power can win the Cox Plate, Will you talk to the media? No. Will you step forward to receive the trainer's trophy? No. To really appreciate Jack's desperation to win today's Cox Plate, you have to remember just how agonisingly close he's come before. In 1996, only Darren Biedman on Saintly and the photo finish camera could make anyone believe Volante had been toppled in the very last stride. It's Volante, a young lad, all outboard running a mighty race, and here's Saintly with the last charge down the outside. Saintly coming in for Volante. Saintly and Volante saw nothing in it. Saintly or Volante couldn't pick it. Saintly, it's official. Saintly is first. Got there. Last year, Volante returned to make amends. He had the field covered until an inside passage produced the ultimate upset. 
Belonde just in front in counter, trying to get to him. Dane Ripper getting the rails run further out is Bialy. It's Dane Ripper, the Malta, the despised outside, and Dane Ripper got right along the fence and came away to win the BMW Cox Plate in a boil over. Falonte has run second in counter. With Falonte later retired, Might and Power was earmarked to fill the Denham's Cox Plate void. From the moment he clinched last year's Melbourne Cup, he was set for this race, and this race alone. Patchy form, injury, and illness bred some doubters. But all along, Jack's faith has been unwavering. Well, Jack, some people were disappointed after the Warwick Stakes, but you didn't look to be too disappointed. I wasn't disappointed, John. In all fairness to him, the tracks have been a problem on it. It's six weeks since I've been over galloping. The Cox played us two, two months away, which his main ambition is, and I wouldn't want him ready at this stage. Uh, I honestly it, think he wants two more runs before he's ready. Now, is it possible, too, that as he gets older, it's taking him a little longer? No, it's just the conditions of the tracks. That's the main thing. But I'm in no hurry, really. Give me their Cox plate, though. Like I said, Dad's aiming for this race and he'll go into it 110%. If he gets beat, there'll be no excuses. Given the relationship between father and son, it's not surprising to hear Jack say he'll probably skip today's presentation. He set that tone last spring. Many thought he was simply rude, but Jack had another motive. Why didn't you go to accept the trophy at Caulfield? Well, I don't go to any of them places, Cliff. Alan takes the horses uh, down. He does all the work on him. I'm on the phone to him all the time. And when you get a son and he's done all the work, it's hard to go down there and just push him in the background and say, I'll take over now. Well, I wouldn't do that to anyone. So, Jack, now this is, this is fascinating. Mm. The, the main reason you didn't want to step forward at Caulfield and Flemington on Melbourne Cup Day was the fact that you wanted Alan, who'd been looking after that horse, to have all of the kudos. Well, he'd done all the other work, John. Why was he entitled to the kudos? Mm. Did Alan know that's why you didn't step forward? No, I never said nothing. I just said, go and get the cups on. Even if Jack's Cox Plate dream is realised today, it's unlikely to be a training swan song. He may be 74, but he's not about to give up his trade. Is the word retirement in your vocabulary? Piss me alive, John. If I retire, I'll die, and it'll be the end of me. No other interest? No. Don't play bowls? Nothing. Don't like golf? No. Fishing? No. Wouldn't, wouldn't walk around the corner for a golf ball. So, getting out of bed at 3 a.m., and looking after a string of racehorses is all you want to do. That's all my life. Mm. And as long as you possibly can. Yep. Yeah, like it's been good to me. If you were to have it all over again, you know, same horses, same people, same racetracks, same circumstances. I mean, think, would you be just a little nicer to the media? If no, you had still the same. I've enjoyed the racing all my life and still enjoy it. Any special message for, for your media friends before we close? Don't torment me. <laughs> OK, Jack Denham being serious, being emotional, talking to John Tapp earlier this year. Right, let's look at the prices. Jack's... Champ Might and Power is at very short odds. Five to four on in the BMW Cox Plate. 20 to one Doremus, 12 to one Bart Cummings representative Catalan opening, 100 Super Slew, 50 Batavian, 14 Gold Guru, 25 Dodge, 66 Northern Drake, seven to two second favorite Tycoon Lil, and then the two three-year-olds, Dracula and Kenwood Melody are both at nine to one. Joining me now, my two partners in crime, you might say, Darren Beedman and Simon O'Donnell. I hope Beedman's not up to too much crime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's not. 
we're going to preview this race. We're going to have a look at a few of the lead-ups, and particularly the Yolumba Stakes from a fortnight ago when Might and Power returned to his best and knocked over Tycoon Lil. Darren, what do you think of this race? Well, um, you know, I think this is, you know, hopefully this, this is the way the race is going to finish out today, but Shane tried everything to try and beat uh, t uh, Might and Power. For one stage at the 700 metre mark, I thought he had Might and Power beat, but he's just that real grinder and he just keeps winding up, and as you can see, he's just got the stamina and, he just, and, and a great will to win. Apart from the fact that you had your money on him, Simon, uh, impressed you? Yeah, he certainly did. A couple of crucial things. I think he still had improvement in from this one, particularly in the coat. Alan Denham said on the racing show today, we ha Dad has set him for this race. I think Might and Power is actually peaking to the minute for what's going to happen here this afternoon. Of course, before he came to Melbourne and ran in the uh, Yolumba Stakes two weeks ago, he ran in the weight for age Group 1 George Main Stakes at Randwick. And he was disappointing. The horse who won that race is running second last in the Cerise, Dracula, and he's running today. You know, Shane Dye um, sort of said Drac this race was run and set up for Dracula. I don't actually so much agree with him. Yes, he, he didn't have much weight on his back. He hasn't got much weight on his back today. He proved that he could compete against the get best and beat them in a fair dickum, well-run, hard, tough race, group race. And I, I think, forget the guineas, I think today he's still a good lightweight chance. I think he is. He's, he's going to be able to... Uh, run a similar sort of race, sit back off the speed and be able to swoosh home over the top of them. But, um, you know, he, he did run a little bit disappointing last start at Caulfield and apparently his blood count has come up, which is encouraging to hear. Well, Bart Cummings has won the last two BMW Cox plates with Saintly, ridden by Darren Biedman, and last year with that great mare, Dane Ripper. He's trying to make it three in a row with Catalan opening. Darren caught up with him a short time ago. Well, Bart, you're going to create a hat trick here and... Um, and, and, and break Jack's heart. Well, we beat him twice the last two years, so it'd um, be great to get a hat-trick, Darren. <laughs> the horse is obviously pleased. She's done well here. Um, he worked well here the other morning. Yes, I'm very pleased with him, and uh, Thursday morning his work was just about uh, as good as he's been in the past, and on that form he's a, a wait, wait for age winner and he's got some chance, and uh, I think he ran very well today. Well, one horse who will be battling to win the race is the despised outsider, Super Slew. Uh, but if he does, it'll be a great story. He's being ridden by a butte kid called Christian Reith, who also was interviewed by Darren. Well, Christian, it's your first Cox Plate ride. You're on the outside of Super Slew. Mate, how are the butterflies? Yeah, they're good. I'm relaxed, I'm ready, and I'm ready to get out there and beat them. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you certainly showed that you could handle pressure. It was a fantastic ride from a wide gate in the Epsom Handicap when you rode him um, uh, to a third placing in the Epsom. So um, you know what pressure's all about. Um, how's the horse done since the last run? Yeah, he's just stride down here with the cooler weather and that, and um, I think he'll be competitive today if he runs up to his last run in the Epsom. Yeah. You've had, uh, you said you had one ride at the Valley. Um, have you had a, had a ride today? No, Tuesday morning I rode on this track. Um, it's a great surface. Um, the horse handled it very well. Mm. He gave you a good feel? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And um, what do you think of the atmosphere? What, uh, personally, you know, the emotions? Uh, how did you sleep last night? Yeah, I slept all right. Um, I don't really worry about the crowd. I'm just worried about tactics and that, and that's all I'm concentrated on. Yeah. How many game plans you got up your sleeve? One. What's that, mate? Win. <laughs> That's always a good one to have. Well, mate, all the best today, and um, I hope you come home a victorious winner. Thanks, Darren. A nice young fella. I say might and power first, Kenwood Melody second, Dracula third. Yeah, I'll just swap around the three odds. I know the three odds have to be exceptional to win this race. I think we're underestimating Dracula. I know Kenwood Melody's good. Might and power and the two three-year-olds. Darren? I'm going to go might and power, Tycoon Lil and uh, Kenwood Melody. Vossi, what's happening in the ring? Well, Kenny, this is where the payout queue is for Michael Iskander. I'm that confident about might and power. I'm here already, ready to accept after the running of the BMW Cox Plate. Of the top four picks, the best price you can get, might and power, five to four on a dollar eighty. Tycoon Lil is out to five to one. Dracula and Kenwood Melody, both nine to one. So the countdown is on in earnest to the BMW Cox Plate. We'll have it for you shortly on the Wide World of Sports. Yes, a big crowd in, uh, a little windy, but around 27 degrees, fantastic atmosphere, a lot of expectation. We're just uh, minutes away from the big one, race six, that starts at 3.30. The BMW Cox Plate, 
And I guess one of the traditions here at Mooney Valley is the presentation of the riders to the public. Right now, we're heading down to the mounting yard where the members of the class of 98 are about to meet their public. Ladies and gentlemen, just 15 minutes to the BMW Cox Plate of 1998 when the greatest horses in this part of the world will contest what is known as the heavyweight championship of horse racing. But also the jockeys, it's their championship as well. It's my pleasure now to introduce to you the 12 heroes of today that will contest this wonderful wait for age race. Would you please welcome the rider of number one, the greatest horse in Australia at the moment. This is the pumper Jimmy Cassidy riding might and power. Jim has won five derbies, five oaks, two Melbourne Cups. 61 Group 1 wins. The rider of number two, Doremus, one of the most popular and controversial jockeys riding in Australia. He's ridden 45 Group 1 winners. Welcome him back to Mooney Valley, the G, Greg Hall. Riding for Bart Cummings today, the combination that was successful last year with Dane Ripper. This man has won a Cox Plate, he's won a Hong Kong Cup, a Melbourne Cup, he's won 36 Group 1s. Damien Oliver. And riding Super Slew, the outsider from Queensland, the fairy tale horse, if he can win the race. Riding this horse, a young rider from Queensland, has ridden over 100 winners, Christian Reith. Good luck, Christian. Riding Batavian from New Zealand, a man who's won over 1,000 races in New Zealand, one of the best known jockeys in that country. This is Peter Johnson. Riding number six, the derby winner of last year, Gold Guru. Successful at Group 1 level eight times and very successful riding in Hong Kong recently. Welcome him back to big time racing, Paddy Payne. <laughs> number seven is Dodge. Dodge will be ridden by a young man who has a specialist knowledge of the Mooney Valley track. He's ridden over 500 winners, two Group 1s, Brett Preble. Number eight is Northern Drake, to be ridden today by a man who's ridden over 2,000 winners, including 30 Group 1s, Greg Childs. <laughs> Riding the second favourite in the race, the mayor from New Zealand, Tycoon Lil, is one of the most controversial, popular, outspoken sportsmen in Australia, Billy Shane Dye. <laughs> Number 10 is Dracula to be ridden by Sydney's champion record-breaking jockey of last season, stable rider for the Denham Hawks camp, Larry Cassidy. <laughs> and number 11, Kenwood Melody, the other three-year-old in the race, to be ridden by a former champion Queensland jockey, now domiciled in New South Wales. He's ridden 14 Group 1 winners, Chris Munts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Cox Plate is made up of great horses, great trainers and great riders and wonderful owners. These are the riders who will contest this race today. We wish them a successful and safe ride. Good luck to you all. Well, 11 young men in the spotlight, the riders of the Cox Plate Runners of 1998. And the man who must be feeling the most pressure is Jimmy Cassidy, who rides the favourite Might and Power. Just before that presentation, Darren Biedman caught up with the pumper. Now the big one of the day, the BMW Cox Plate. Um, you're on your favourite, Might and Power, and he will be favourite today, a hot favourite. Um, one thing I did notice at Flemington, uh, sorry, at Caulfield that day when you rode him, is that you've got a real affinity with the horse and you've got a, an affection to the horse. And um, obviously that um, transpires, you know, when you do ride him. Yeah, I just like to sort of let him do a little bit of his own thing. And I, I'm a great, but the three times that I've won on him in Caulfield, I've always taken him with a pony. and. Uh, on these sort of hype days, the crowd's roaring and they do get a little bit uh, keyed up. And as soon as he gets with the pony, he just switches off and I just keep talking to him and pat him and uh, he, he relaxes nice, which I think is great because you've got to be, you know, I've got to be relaxed and it's good uh, that he's relaxed with me. And, uh, you know, if he does that again today, um, you know, it's going to be a good race. Now, uh, that's one race that has eluded you, the Cox Plate. Obviously, you want to put that, uh, that nail in your belt. Yeah, look, it'd be great, Darren. He's... Uh, I think he'd be the first horse since, I think, maybe rising fast um, if he can win the three big ones. So I think for, for myself, for Jack and, and Nick, it'll be, it'll be fantastic. It's a race that Jack hasn't uh, been able to win yet. I haven't been able to win it. So I think if we can win that today, I think for racing and, and for ourselves personally, it'll be great. We'll hope for this. Right, time for a quick Tate update, I think, and yes, uh, we'll mate, use the board. 
Number one, Might and Power, is still at five to four on. Odds on favourite, a dollar eighty for a dollar investment. Twenty to one, Doremus. Twelves, Catalan opening. One hundred, Super Slu. Fifty to one, the Kiwi Batavian. Fourteen to one, Gold Guru. Seven months ago, he beat Might and Power. Twenty-five to one, Dodge. Sixty-six to one, Northern Drake. Five to one, Tycoon Lil. Ten to one, Dracula. And the second three-year-old, Kenwood Melody, is just over eight to one on the tote. Righto, well, the horses are around there parading. Simon O'Donnell, there's your mate. There's the champ. TAB number one, Might and Power, Jim Cassidy to ride him for Jack Denham. Yes, uh, look, he just looks magnificent in the yard. Jack Denham has got him really to peak on this day. You can see all the dapples coming out there in his coat. He looks magnificent himself. He worked well here on Tuesday morning. I think the stable couldn't have been happier the way they've presented the horse here today. Well, here's Doremus number two, a horse who has won a million dollars since he last, last won two years ago. And uh, he's to be ridden today by Greg Hall and he's trained by Lee Friedman. If there's a weakness in the top picks in this race, such as Mike, Might and Power and Tycoon Lil, this is the one they'll have to watch really finishing off over the top of them. Doremus, he's a, he'll just sit off the pace, he won't be ridden too close and he'll want the last crack at them. Well, Darren Biedman's around there getting a close look at Catlin opening. TAB number three as we move along to him, there he is. Trained by Bart Cummings and ridden by Damien Oliver. Darren, how does he look? He looks fantastic, Kenny. This horse, I think he looks better than what he did last week and, uh, sorry, two weeks ago on the Yolamba Stakes. He looks very similar to Might and Power. He's got the dapples right out on him. Um, I think this is the best he's looked this preparation. So um, I think we're in for a mighty race with this horse. Uh, Super Slu, TAB number four, is following him along. Uh, Christian Reith rides Super Slu. Uh, we'll get him in centre screen there. No, nope, he's just out of order. We'll find him. Uh, there he is in the centre there, the chestnut horse in the bandages. That's him. Uh, he's uh, trained by Fred Thomas at Doomman. Simon O'Donnell, I think he's aiming too high. Yes, look, he is aiming very high. Oh, look, he did run second in the Epsom behind Dodge. Uh, Dodge is one of the horses that uh, isn't overly favoured in this race, but has some sort of chance. Super Slew would have to reproduce that, plus add on about three or four lengths. Uh, another chestnut, a chestnut stallion, is the Kiwi Batavian. Two starts back, uh, this fellow, uh, there he is there, beat Tycoon Lil in New Zealand over 1,400. Darren, you're around there. Does he grab you? Yes, he does. Um, he's, he's a striking-looking horse. He's a very mature-looking stallion. Um, he's pretty cool, calm and collected. He's taking it all in his stride. Not much is worrying him, and the jockey's just getting legged aboard now, and um, he looks like he's ready for a good race. He's showing plenty of rib, so that's a good sign. Uh, yes, uh, he does look the part. Uh, right, following him along is Gold Guru. Gold Guru uh, is to be ridden by Patrick Payne today. Simon O'Donnell, a big effort by Leon McDonald to get him here. Yes, yeah, certainly is a big effort. Um, Gold Guru, look, he, he hasn't won a race this preparation. He's been there and thereabouts. He really needs to find that extra length in his last 400 today. Leon McDonald is keen to ride him differently. The way he looks, he's trained to the minute. He's presented him particularly well. If the new riding tactics work, he could be in the finish. Number seven is the Chestnut Stallion Dodge. Trained by John Hawkes to be ridden, not by Darren Gouch. He's been replaced by Brett Preble. Uh, Darren, you've ridden a lot for this stable. Yes, yes, it's, it's a fine stable, and this stable always turns their horses around out in perfect order. He's just walking past me right now, and he's looking like a real show pony. He's stretching out well, and nice gloss about his coat. And, um, you know, he's he come off a very good win last start in, in the Epsom Handicap. The Brown Stallion Northern Drake is uh, TAB number eight. There he is in the gold and red colours. Greg Childs rides in for Kenny Mann. Yeah, talented horse, but really, uh, I don't think, has probably lived up to his reputation this time in in this preparation he'd have to improve a fair bit to be right in the first two, three in this race class New Zealand mayor tycoon Lil trained by Colin Gillings to be ridden by Shane Dye will come along now in the turquoise and cerise Darren yes yeah, she, she, she's she's with the pony at the moment um, which uh, obviously to try and give us some company to try and keep her nice and relaxed she looks well and she doesn't look too much different to what she did the other day when she ran at Caulfield so um, I think she's gonna run a mighty race again Dracula is racing in the second set of the Ingham Brothers colors black with a cerise cap Larry Cassidy rides in for John Hawkes yeah good good lightweight chance uh, Larry Cassidy he'll be a bit nervous he'd like to get a win here in this Cox Plate he's won many big races before but not without a chance. Simon, also there's Kenwood Melody, Billy Mitchell's fine horse, to be ridden by Chris Munts. Yeah, Kenny, Ken, Kenwood Melody, look, expect him to run a very good race. Billy Mitchell, he was quite confident before, expects a bold run from the three-year-old. 
So there you have it. They're the runners in the Cox Plate 1998, the BMW Cox Plate, 11 star gallopers, uh, and you're going to see it on the wide world of sports. Uh, they're going on the track now, uh, led out by Might and Power. Uh, he's already on the track. There's Tycoon Lil in centre screen, coming along for Shane Dye. She's definitely put on condition since she was in Sydney. She looks an absolute treat. Lee Friedman knows what it takes to win a big race. He's with Darren Biedman. Well, Lee, I just spotted Dur old Doremus walking around the enclosure here, and he looks absolutely spectacular, the horse, doesn't he? Well, I know it sounds crazy, Darren, being eight-year-old, but it's the best we've had him in a long, long while. I mean, uh, if we'd had a fair bit of rain, I'd nearly be highly confident. I'm pretty confident just the same. I think he ran a great race. You'll obviously get back in the race and he'll be swooshing home, so he's, um, he, that, they'll have to be keeping uh, a look over their shoulder. Yeah, well, they've been breaking records all day. That's going to that's gonna hopefully set it up for a horse that's, uh, that's a two-miler and a very strong finisher uh, like him. They haven't been winning from well off the pace state. This just may be the race where they do it. Have you tried to take the same path as what Bart did with Saintly? I noticed a uh, similar sort of program. Yeah, but Bart didn't have to take on might and power. I do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Well, all the best today and uh, go out there and We'll try and go it. one better than what you did for me. <laughs> Get out of here. Lee Friedman talking with Darren Biedman. Vussie, give us a last bit of mail from the ring. Yeah, Ken, getting a little sparse here in the betting ring. Most of the punters now on. There has been a little bit of support there for Tycoon Lil that did drift out to 5-1, to one, now into 9-2. to two. The money we thought would come for Catalan opening hasn't eventuated as much as 16-1 to one now. Might and Power still 5-4 to four on. And the two three-year-olds, Dracula and Kenwood Melody, both 10-1. to one. But Ken, I've only got one thing to say. Go Might and Power. Good on you, Andrew. All right, tactics are going to be all important here, particularly from Shane Dye's point of view on Tycoon Lil. Here's Shane's tactics. From the 2040 metre start in the Cox Plate, it definitely helps to draw an inside barrier. You don't want to be wide going around this first turn. But in saying that, the barrier is not going to help Might and Power. He would have been better off drawing wide. Now, if he misses the start, he's in all kinds of trouble today. And I'll be watching for that. I'll be going forward on Tycoon Lil, trying to hit him. But so will Super Sloop. There's going to be quite a bit of pace early in this race because you're looking to get your positions. Now, what Jimmy will be doing is after he goes around the first turn, he'll be pushing horses out of the way to go forward. There's no doubt about that. Super Sloot, Tycoon Lil, they're probably going to be in front. Gold Guru will be back. What I'm trying to do now is get my horse to relax at about the 1,300 metres because we turn at the 1,200. I want to be on the fence or one off. I'm watching for Might and Power. Where is he? If Jimmy's going too fast, I'll let him go. If he's going too slow, I'm happy. I'll sit off him. Now, this race really begins at the half mile. The swoopers start to come. Swoopers are the horses back in the field. The horses like Dodge, Dracula, Kenwood Melody. The race is really on. Turning for home, they're going full bore. Might and Power's in front. Tycoon Lewis challenging. Watch for Kenwood Melody late. Late. It's a great way race. May might and power get beat, I'm afraid to say, by Tycoon Lil. <laughs> Shane Dye, the rider of Tycoon Lil, who of course is trained by the Kiwi Colin Gillings. Here's Colin speaking with Darren Biedman. Well, Cole, uh, you've got Tycoon Lil. Any, any, have you got an update for us? Well, she travelled in on the float. I came with her. She travelled in and didn't turn her hair. She's had her blood taken. She's still not sweating, quite settled. I'm very pleased with her. Her work must have been pleasing for you, uh, the way she's been able to adapt here on, uh, at, at Mooney Valley the other morning? Uh, I didn't ask her for much here the other morning, Darren. Uh, I did a lot of work with her last Saturday morning, a week ago today. She satisfied me there. On Thursday, I let her run an easy 1,600. First 1,000, she went about 14, 15 to the furlong and then came home and 